Good morning, Alina. I'm Leslie here in Montana. Good morning. My name is Alina Svitkovsky. I know my last name is a tongue twister. <laughs> Svitkovsky. I got it from my husband, which is Yugoslavian descent. I was born and raised in Belarus. Where is yes. Belarus? Belarus. Uh, this question, I get that a lot. <laughs> Belarus is a very small country, but it's independent country. It's located right in the middle between Poland. Ukraine will be to the south of it. Russia is on the east. And on north, Belarus is bordering with Latvia and Lithuania. So it's actually a really small country, but if you look at geography, it was always a very important landmark because it's right in the heart, right between all the countries. A lot of people will ask Belarus, is it white Russia? Uh, kinda. You can translate it like that because belly means white, but uh, we always considered ourselves uh, a separate, small, separate nation. It's the size of actually New Jersey. <laughs> can I look close to the coastline? Yes, I live in South Jersey, right on the beach. It's Wildwood Crest, New Jersey, and it's very touristic spot for Pennsylvania. We have a lot of people from Connecticut in the summer. They choose it as their summer destination. So, so have yeah. you been getting hit kind of hard with some hurricanes? You know what? It wasn't bad by us here this year. How did you get inspired to start playing with dolls? I have three children, and... But my first daughter, when she was one year old, we were playing with Play-Doh. And all of a sudden, she asked, Mommy, make Elsa. And I said, okay. <laughs> the first time in my life, I was 30 years old, I started making Elsa. And Elsa came out kind of cool. And I really enjoyed it so much. And my husband saw it. And he goes, hey, listen, that was good. I said, you know what? I so enjoyed it. I never knew I had it in me. It was just coming out out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. Play-Doh. Then I looked in how people do it. And I started looking and, you know, internet. I, I saw expiring pictures. That's how I found uh, polymer clay as a medium. That was my first medium I worked with. And believe it or not, I got to a hard part right away. <laughs> My first one, I decided I'm going to go ahead and sculpt the baby. <laughs> yes, the baby is hard. Uh-huh. All the research, you know, uh, and I was working hard. At it. it was the size of, like this. I don't know, three inches or so. <laughs> but uh, it, it had the little chubby lips. All of it was pure internet research. So was, that's how I started after that first doll. I didn't have too much time because, you know, small baby, then in three years, I had my son. So I would play with polymer. I was trying to do some jewelry pieces, see how it works. In 2019, when I was pregnant, very pregnant, like 33 weeks pregnant, <laughs> third uh, child with my baby, a girl, I saw on Instagram, she's very famous in Russia, Belarus, in that part, Galina Dmitruk. That was her name. She's a doll maker. And she posted that she's coming to Florida and there will be opportunity to take a class. I said to my husband, I said, listen, I really, really want to do this. He goes, you cannot even fly. I said, no, I can. It's only two <laughs> hours from New Jersey. <laughs> you don't want to get a pregnant lady upset either. <laughs> that was probably his reasoning. <laughs> so I flew to Florida and she introduced me to her dolls. She brought some of them with her. And that was the first time I saw a real art doll in person, not just on photos. She has such a charisma. It was four days of doll making. I came home uh, with a doll on my own after that class. This was the doll which I did after her class on my own. Okay, now just for the oh. clarification there, because she is somewhat large there, that's all polymer. No, Galina mm -hmm. works with uh, air dry clay, but that clay is made in Belgium and they do not sell it in US. This one made out of that clay, it's air dry clay, but it has a lot of marble uh, powder in it. So it's Does very hard. Um, that clay is a little bit less expensive than polymer there, I would assume. You know, it's 
probably about the same, but the technique is so different. You know, because when you're working with air dry clay, it allows you to make one part, let it dry, then you can add or you can cut it off. You can carve what you didn't like. So I feel like it's more forgiving. This clay, with me having kids, it actually gave me more possibilities. I could stop my job anytime. Is that you also need to some bake it in order to cement what you're working on before they can go on to the next stage? Do you need to do that with this other clay that you work in? Only if I want to speed my process, make some part, let's say I would work on the nose and cheeks, and I don't want to keep touching the fresh pieces or when I'm adding, it doesn't smooth. I could stick it in the oven on around 280 degrees just for like half hour, 20 minutes and pull it out and keep working. It makes the process easier, but you don't have to do that. So it's similar, but again, as you said, a little bit more forgiving. It's forgiving because yes, um, it's easier for sanding. It's easier for carving. Uh, Also, polymer clay drove me crazy with the dust. And with the kids, you know, it's just fine. (laughs) I do like um, working with air dry clay. It became my preferred medium. I did return to polymer clay recently. Just needed adjustment, I guess. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. It's just a different technique. This particular doll was made with that uh, clay made in Belgium, which which has marble in it. Of course, I couldn't find it in US. I start using paper clay. So, and I, I start working with this and I don't complain. I find it uh, very uh, hard after it dries. Um, it's not as fragile. I met you through the IDR competition. So you want to show us your winning piece of your bluebird happiness? When I started her, I was thinking about after the rain. She's bluebird of happiness. So it's after she comes out of the cage. Uh, It was showing that as a bird cannot sing in the cage, ballerina cannot dance in the cage. It was showing all that after the rain, after something bad happens to us, there always will be happiness. That's what I was showing. I I wrote that some of the judges found that it's a very sad story. The the doll is happy. (laughs) I got that through their comments. I got that. The story, yes, I wrote the story about a woman being in a hospital. It did relate to me in real life. Once my mother was very sick. It was in 2010 and I was here and she was there. So when I wrote that story, I really reflected my heart in it. Basically, the story was about rainy days. It rains and it rains and you're waiting for that sunshine. So that's how my mother was waiting for me to come visit her. After the rain, no matter what, whatever is in your life, the sunshine will come. The dark ages, they never forever. (laughs) That's my attitude overall in life. I want people to see it. I want them always think about it, that it's not forever, whatever you're going through. So that this is what the piece was about. Well, and and you said it, because I think that's really the term of what an artist is. It's not always how wonderful and great you are. It's the fact that you can take your experiences and express them in a way that allows you to channel that because whatever you feel shows up in your artwork. You get to see a part of the your soul. How come she came across so beautifully? Well, thank you. Thank you. That, that's what fascinates me in this art. We just had conversation with one of the doll makers. It wasn't conversation. It was more of a um, lecture style. She was just talking about how art dolls became a new, a completely new branch in art. But she mentioned, which I found so interesting, I never really thought about it that way. She said, did you think that how long ago dolls were with us? Like historically, if you think about it, Mm -hmm. they would find the dolls made out piece of wood and branches and it's a doll. And she said, did you think why? She said, that's because it's the only art which actually connects us with kind of like that world you know we look at the doll and we will give it name 
we will say, oh, the doll is sad. We will say she or he. We will put into it a soul. When we look at pictures, we don't want to hug them. <laughs> but the dolls, we talk about it. We say, oh, look how she's looking at me. She's smiling <laughs> or opposite. Oh, why you're so mad? We do talk to dolls. Like you said, it is that connection. And it doesn't matter. It's sculpted doll. It can be a teddy bear. It's also type of doll. What you always keep hearing is that doll making is a dying art. So if we can educate the next generation, because in theory, they still are doing dolls. They're just making their own Warhammer game figurines. Those are still a doll, just really, really little. Agree. Absolutely. That's why I am so grateful to find IADR to keep people together, to keep talking about it, to like to reintroduce this art. And even my friends, when they finding out what I do, they're fascinated. They want to know more. And then I'm like, okay, hey, here is this and this and that. So it is interesting. People love it. How did you find us? How find IADR? I found it on Instagram. One of the artists, a member, posted. Maybe it was uh, Loredana. Do I pronounce it right? Uh, Silva? Silva? Oh, Lordana. Lordana. Probably yeah. it was her. Mm -hmm. She posted and I'm like, oh, it's in US. I've been looking for a US group uh, for quite a while, honestly. A lot of groups, it's more like collectors. They're collecting antique dolls or something, but not really makers. Okay. I just wanted a simple community <laughs> conversation <laughs> like this. And I really love IADR. Well, no, thank you. Because when you're communicating with the other people, like you said, in someone in your own country, when they talk about a product or they talk about a show, you know that it's accessible. It is nice to be able to have some U.S. Uh, members as well as, as we said, we are international, which is awesome. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your character. This is Life, and the composition is called Gifts of Life. So she represents life. I was trying to make a tree. So she's kind of part of a tree. She has flowers. They are all different color. Here we see petals falling off and she's kind of looking down. The idea is she represents life and life gives us its gifts. Doesn't matter. They're bitter, sweet or sour they made specially for each one of us. And after we have the same idea as my bluebird of happiness, after we have a bitter uh, fruit, we will get a, a sweet one. You just got to wait. Mm -hmm. So this doll has these gifts. Just remember, it's specially for you. Nobody will have your life. Nobody will have what you going through your happiness it's your time to eat those sweet fruits enjoy when you got a bitter one so well it was your time to have it and sometimes we cannot do nothing about it that is why she, she's free she's life she's our goddess <laughs> whatever she gives you just take it <laughs> so i have a question that material that flows around her off the side yes this is uh silk She's covered here. All of this is sculpted and she also has hair. It's sheep hair. It's real hair. Everything else on this piece is sculpted. All the flowers, the tree. You make most of your costumes. Now, didn't you just enter a contest here where you won a costuming award? Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, that was a contest. It's called History of Fashion. It was my first time doing it with them. The theme was texture and illusion. I decided for myself if the whole contest is called History of Fashion. It has to be something from fashion. It has to be about her dress. So this is mirrored mosaic. My inspiration was Lady Gaga. When I looked through her costumes, I remember I posted on Instagram, guess what I'm going to do? And I posted several photos of Lady Gaga with her <laughs> extravagant uh, fashion costumes. Yes, I worked with Mirrored Mosaic. Actually, it was a challenge. How to have this mosaic actually to have the shape. Her dress, Lady Gaga's dress was called Disco Ball. That's how I named the doll as well, Disco Ball. Her dress was also like sculpted. 
So I'm like, how will I make that? Should I sculpt it? Should I make a dress? So I figured the way to make it actually as a removable dress. I put the strings in the back to make it this body. I found this in Michael's, this thin wire mesh. I cut the fabric. I layered it in between with that mesh. And then I was able to keep the shape. And then on top, I was able to apply mosaic. Thinking that has to be quite complicated, even though you make it sound easy. That's why I do like challenge because I was going into it. I'm like, I'm in without knowing how will I do it? I'll figure it out in the process. That's, you know, that's what makes it fun. Do you do dolls on commission or do you do only for your own interest? I still consider myself in the beginning of my doll making career, if you want to call it, I still have my little girl with me. My youngest is three. So it's kind of holds me back. People do ask a lot. I, I do get requests and I do get compliments, which, you know, very much appreciated. When you're an artist, it's important to have feedback, to hear if people like it or want it. Right now, I'm um, in this in between when I just cannot fulfill my promise. But uh, Disco Ball is for sale. We'll see what happens with that. Mostly I do dolls just when I have time and inspiration for now. But, but you'd it, like to see yourself down the road then being able to do more with your absolutely. art. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I do take uh, a course right now. You see all the, uh, the skulls on my background there. <laughs> I do take a course, a sculpting course, uh, to be able to do more. I believe never stop learning, my motto. You definitely will see more of my work and more often. <laughs> so what do you feel like attracts you to your dolls? Where do you like to see them go? As of right now, I noticed that every piece I do, I do like to emphasize women's sexuality in a good way. Never too much or vulgar, but I do like, uh, she has open body and I like to show more of hips, right? Uh, disco ball has in incredibly long legs. I like that. I like to show curve but without being artificial. Sometimes uh, people do it and it becomes unattractive. I like to show that a woman has that sex appeal uh, just by turning her shoulder maybe, right? And it changes everything. You're like, wow, look at that. Or the eyes, that long neck. I really like that. I did try uh, making a bit fuller figures. I couldn't do it. You know why? Because I don't know. They always saying that the artist makes a little bit of themselves. So sometimes yeah. I do. I do look in the mirror and see how I should position the neck. We do. <laughs> so it kind of like comes easier for me. But yes, I do like sculpting women. And I do like a little bit of a uh, sex appeal. Every artist puts probably looks at themselves. We, we do. There's no way that we cannot put ourselves into our dolls. That the market really for dolls is more on the eastern side of, of the country. I noticed, uh, particularly in South Jersey right now, I have not seen any doll makers. Like overall, if I will go. But I recently discovered in North Jersey, uh, Jersey City holds annual art exhibit slash sale it goes every year it's huge and they are open to all kinds of artists you have to submit application and see when i was looking through uh, what was going on this year there there was different kind of art different mediums I believe closer to New York, that's what Jersey City is. It's closer to New York, North Jersey. There is plenty of people who would appreciate this uh, kind of art. Oh, well, that's good, too. It is hard for doll artists to still find a market. It is nice to know what is out there that can still support the artist as far as, you know, for shows. So do you explore with the doll making as far as what's done in the other countries? Well, I do uh, follow a lot of doll makers from Russia, Lithuania, Ukrainian doll artists. In Russia particular, 
in Moscow, they do it twice a year in the fall and uh, in spring. Huge exhibit. Never been there in person. Hopefully, you know, traveling gets easier. Hopefully, peace will come. And that would be very nice to visit. What gets you to create? Well, of course, uh, when I look at the doll makers who are already famous, who have their style, I like to explore the difference of style and what they made because somebody will have more extravagant costumes that's what also interesting about dolls right that how many mediums we're using we we are hairdressers we sculpting them we dress them we do the shoes we're shoemakers right <laughs> we do their their hair it's so much involved so yeah i would say that i probably follow and i see uh, um, some some of the artists I would admire how they make in faces or the poses they choose. The others I would always look at their fabrics. Oh, what did they use here? How did she achieve this um, effect? Probably more of inspiration and also like peaking. <laughs> Since you do work with the air clay. I always try to ask the people, what is your favorite tools that you like to work with? Because again, you're kind of working with something similar or different than the polymer clay. The tools will be very similar. So I, this is my favorite. This is a dental tool. I was going to say it looked like a dental tool. It's flat on one side and it's a little bit sharper on the end. So I like working with this. I will always have my knife <laughs> because if something was wrong, it will be <laughs> cut off. Also, interesting thing with air dry clay, you actually can use a brush, regular brush, when it's not too soft, so it doesn't become like mud. You can actually smooth it out with the brush. My, my first tool, it's my hands. I love working and sculpting with my fingers. I love it. What would you think be a word of inspiration to an up and coming doll maker? Just do it. You have to do it. If you have it in your heart, you have it in your mind, do it. And once your family, they see, first of all, how happy it makes you, the end piece. Once you will get a chance to express and put into that doll what you wanted to show, the reward, the feelings you get. Ah, uh, my favorite part when I get to the doll and she comes alive. That's my favorite. She starts looking at you and then you give her hair. And sometimes she's like, no, I don't like that. Like in the beginning, I wanted to make you a brunette, but then it's no way she's fighting you. And you're like, okay, I talk to them. <laughs> I do. That's what will make the artist happy. Just do it. Never listen to people because there are some which will say, what are you doing? Dolls? I, you know, there are a lot of them there that they will say, oh, what, what kind of art is there? Is that cloth? It doesn't matter what medium that is. It's, it's what makes you happy. And if you made it with the feelings, other people will see it. So yeah, don't stop. I would like to thank you for joining me. I love meeting you and your characters. I know we will be talking more in the future. Thank you so much, Leslie. It was so nice talking to you. Thank you. And thank you for everything you do for IADR. IADR is a very important group for this community. So keep it going, please. Thank you. Thank you.